Right now, search crews are still looking for a child who went missing while swimming on the Wisconsin River. In my 24 years on, on this job, this is the worst accident I've ever been part of. Racine County officials are asking people to avoid the interstate there at all costs as investigators clear the scene of a crash that killed two semi drivers and seriously injured others. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Thank you so much for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Dive teams are using the final hours of daylight to search for a child who went missing while swimming in the Wisconsin River. Our Jamie Perez joins us live along the river in Columbia County where officials are still considering this a Well, dive teams have been filtering in and out of this area that we're in right now all day and continuing their search for this missing child. Now, the conditions of the river that they're searching in are actually pretty tough on them. The current here moves about 17,000 cubic feet per second, and the surface temperature of the water is about 56 degrees, and they've only got about two feet of visibility in this river. Now, earlier today, I spoke with the man who lives along the shoreline here, and he said over the past 18 years that he's lived here, he's seen a lot of people playing in this river, a river he says is nothing to mess around in. And if you're going down through that narrow down there by where they're looking for this gentleman at now, it's it's nothing but swerves in there, you know, and, and it's like sucks you under. You know, if you fall off a boat or anything in that area, pretty much you're gone unless you got on a life jacket. The Adams County Sheriff is leading this case. He said if the search continues over a several day period, they may have to call in dive teams from other counties to help them out as well. And of course, this is a story that we will continue to follow and bring you updates on as well. All right, Jamie, thank you. A stretch of I-94 in Racine County is expected to be shut down for another two and a half hours as investigators clear the scene of a fatal crash there. We have a live look right now at that area. And this was the scene around 11 this morning. An initial investigation shows a semi traveling southbound made a lane change, hit the construction barrier. Officials say the driver appears to have overcorrected, hitting the median wall and then pushing that wall into northbound lanes. That forced a three car crash where two people were seriously injured. Now another semi driver tried to avoid that crash, swerving into a ditch. His vehicle, his truck bursting into flames. We're seeing Sheriff Christopher Schmalling says that driver's actions undoubtedly saved other lives. I think uh, this unfortunate deceased individual is a hero in and of itself by, by turning down and, and risking his own life to avoid crashing into innocent people. Both semi drivers were killed in that accident. The sheriff asked the community for patience as they investigate how it happened and who is responsible. Right now, part of Highway 81 in Orfordville is shut down in both directions tonight while crews work to put out a fire there. A DOT, the DOT that is, is asking people to avoid the stretch between Mill Pond Road and County Road H. Dispatchers say the Orfordville Fire Department has called for help from other departments. We do have a crew on the way to that scene and we'll have updates on News 3 Now at 10. But for now, let's check on your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Danica, areas from Madison southward had lots of clouds and some showers and cool temperatures. North of Madison was a different story. You can see there was some sunshine and temperatures were warmer as a result. You can see some more showers trying to creep back into southern Wisconsin, mainly south of Dane County. Uh, this has been happening all day long, but uh, the showers then fizzle as they try to push even farther to the north and eventually they should end this evening. Temperatures range from the lower 60s underneath the showers in Monroe and mid 60s in Janesville and Madison to near 80 in La Crosse. They were at 81 last hour. It's also cooler near Lake Michigan. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will be in the middle 50s. The showers will come to an end. There's an outside chance a shower could pop up tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, look for variably cloudy skies and a high temperature of 74. That's your news for now. First alert forecast. Thank you very much, Gary. The Kenosha County Sheriff's Department has released a picture of the suspect who allegedly shot and killed an off-duty Racine police officer Monday night. Officer John Hetland was killed when he tried to stop an armed robber at a bar. There is a $27,000 reward for information leading to the capture of that suspect. Governor Tony Evers has ordered flags to be flown at half staff as a sign of respect for Officer Hetland. He was a 24-year veteran of the Racine Police Department and was close to retirement. The governor adds Officer Hetland was a loving father and son, a valued member of his community, 
and leaves behind an honorable legacy of services. His heroism and bravery will never be forgotten. Close to 25,000 people are expected to visit Madison this weekend for the American Family Golf Championships. But ongoing construction near the University Ridge Golf Course could cause delays, and we're talking about the work going on at County Roads M and PD, and that's where we find our Adam Duxter with the latest on what we can expect this weekend. Adam? Well, Eric and Danica, this actually isn't the first year that the AmFam Championship is having to deal with this construction, but they say that's a good thing because rather than just swinging for a solution, they say they've already got a plan in place. As these guys get ready to golf, AmFam Tournament Director Nate Pokras is getting ready for everything else this weekend has in store. Yeah, we expect large crowds Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Namely, road construction close to the University Ridge Golf Course, expected to draw close to 25,000 fans for this weekend's event. Everybody should just allow for a little extra time. Uh, again, with, uh, with Madison Police managing traffic control at the corner, we'll be able to move cars smoothly through the intersection. Uh, but with, uh, with construction going on, we certainly should allow for extra time. Pocras says while they've got shuttles running from Verona schools and the Epic campus, they're still relying heavily on their partnerships with Madison Police, who say this weekend is about balancing priorities. The priority of the project is getting it done, but the priority for our community is definitely to keep everyone safe. Safety being the reason they're stopping construction here just for the weekend. The tournament's director says getting through the construction might be a pain, but in the end, it'll be worth it. So if everybody understands and has that patience, knowing we're, we're ultimately here for the greater good, uh, ultimately everybody will have a great experience. And once the project's done, we know it'll be, uh, it'll be outstanding for everybody. The city says, well, it's still a hassle after navigating the cones and barrels for a few years now, they have this event down to a science. So the coordination is always there, but we've kind of gotten into a groove where we know who we need to connect with, we know what works, we know how to get people in and out safely and um, effectively. Now, despite all of this, there are still some backups and delays expected here this weekend. So if you don't have to travel this way, it's recommended that you don't. And even though that they've dealt with this construction in years past, they say they're already looking forward to next year when this construction is scheduled to be done in all the years following that. Everybody's looking forward to that. Yeah, project. I think so. <laughs> Wrapping up. Adam's live on the West Side. Adam, thank you. Governor Tony Evers has proclaimed today Juneteenth Day across the state. He joined a celebration of the historic day in Milwaukee. Now, Juneteenth dates to 1865, a day that Union Army soldiers came to Galveston, Texas, to declare the end of slavery. President Lincoln had issued the Emancipation Proclamation two years earlier, but until that point, slavery was still active in Confederate states because of a lack of Union soldiers to enforce the proclamation. At the state capitol, a group of female lawmakers is pushing for legislation that would allow women to fill their birth control prescriptions for up to 12 months at a time. Right now, Wisconsin health insurance plans only cover 30 or 90 day supplies. The legislation supporters say extending that to a year long supply reduces the odds of unintended pregnancy by 30% and reduces abortion rates by 46%. The new president of the UW Board of Regents says he'll continue to push for more state funding for the UW system. Next week, state lawmakers will vote on a scaled back version of the UW system budget that is compared to what Go T Governor Tony Evers originally proposed. Rose Schmidt is here now to explain how, how that will impact faculty and staff. Rose? Yes, well, new Regent President Drew Peterson says he believes he made a reasonable request to the Budget Committee, and they'll continue to make the case to state lawmakers that that universities should get more money to help invest in students and retain those who teach them. We need people to come and teach. Interest is growing for students at UW-Madison wanting to study chemistry. But department chair Professor Judith Burstyn says the pool of faculty members to pick from isn't getting any larger. There was a roughly 20 year period where very few, few people left our department and over the last five, six years, we've seen quite a number of departures. The question being why? She says each case is different, but much of it comes back to this. Our salaries are not competitive. The Republican controlled state budget committee approved about $69 million less for the UW system 
than Democratic Governor Tony Evers asked for, saying it spends too much. But new UW Board of Regents President Drew Peterson says a lot can change in budget negotiations over the next two weeks. I, along with other folks in the system and on the board, are continuing to make the case that this is a terrific reinvestment and we're optimistic that we'll see additional dollars. Under the plan the committee approved, UW campuses would continue to freeze in-state tuition for two years, but the state would not provide the funding for that freeze. The Board of Regents had previously supported a tuition freeze with the recognition that there'd be reinvestment for things like faculty salaries, like public safety. UW staff members would also see a 2% pay increase each year under the plan the Budget Committee approved. But by not funding the tuition freeze, universities would have to allocate about $16 million from other places to cover staff salaries, meaning cuts will have to be made in other places, like supplies in Professor Burstyn's classrooms. We have to struggle to be able to cover the demand. Peterson says the Board of Regents is happy about the $1.1 billion proposed for university building projects, including $78 million to renovate Camp Randall and $48 million to renovate the Cole Center. The State Assembly will vote on the budget next Tuesday with the State Senate following a few days later. All right, Rose, thank you for the update. Well, coming up, a Madison-based startup hopes to give undiscovered musicians a platform and to change the music industry's business model all at the same time. We'll introduce you to the new music streaming app started by UW-Madison students as it prepares for a nationwide launch. An area startup company is preparing for a nationwide app launch next month. Not only do the creators plan to transform the local music scene, the hope is to change the entire industry from their home base here in Madison. Madeline O'Neill introduces us to the team behind Loom. Madeline? Well, if you guys are wondering about the name Loom, it was originally an acronym for Live Undiscovered Music. Most of the team behind it graduated from UW-Madison within the last year. They're now working on getting the music streaming app ready for emerging artists and fans across the country. True motivation is only rooted in passion. Making it big takes effort. They always say it takes a village. That rings true whether you're working on a new album. Early morning, rising with the sky. Or a new app. A lot of work. Inside this downtown Madison office, a team is putting finishing touches on Loom, a free music streaming platform built on a social network, a project many of these recent grads signed up for rather than taking other jobs they had lined up. How are we doing, James? Including CEO and founder Max Fergus. Very, very excited and, of course, very, very stressed out. She's our best brand ambassador. It might sound like a leap. 
but it's one you've got to take if you're aiming high. There we go. We noticed that even though the industry was growing rapidly, that companies like Spotify and mainstream music alternatives were doing really poorly financially. We realized that we could potentially not only fix the financial problems of the industry, but also fix the problems with music promotion for emerging artists and music discovery. So many artists. They do that by focusing only on emerging artists' music, like this. Cutting out the high royalty fees associated with mainstream songs while allowing musicians to gain a following in their own backyard and get them on stage. Madison is the number one live music campus in the world, and I don't think a lot of people really realize that. Loom launched its pilot app in August, drawing in 7,000 users from the area. You're going to find the best music that you've never heard. Including local aspiring DJ and now Loom brand manager Francisco Lozano. Because I can drop, you know, an album and it'd be literally the best album ever. But if no one knows about it, if no one uh, knows me or knows about it or even listens to it, what's the point? He says with Loom, he already has fans and feedback. It's already doing it. It's, it's insane. Wherever your talent lies. I'm probably one of the least musically inclined people of all time. This crew wants to make sure everyone has a chance to make it. We still have a long way to go, but I think we're just as excited for the journey now as we've ever been. The app is also a collaboration with the local Frank Productions, a concert promoter and big name here in Madison. You can currently find the beta version of Loom in the Apple Store, and they're officially launching it nationwide July 11th with a concert at the Majestic, featuring a few local artists, including Austin. You heard a brief snippet of her music in the story. All right. Pretty, Very exciting. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Story. Maddie, thanks. Mm. Another cool day out, but we will creep back into the mid-70s in time for the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Gary Kinalty will have your first alert forecast next at 6.
Well, a lot of us who are stuck underneath the clouds today and that held temperatures down to the north. There was sunshine and temperatures are about 10 degrees warmer. Another little batch of showers coming in from the south, uh, affecting far southern Wisconsin, mainly south of Dane County. Most of this rain will stay to our south, but we'll have to get through those showers this evening before we see any improvement, at least uh, in the rain chances. Now, tomorrow, some thunderstorms will be developing out to the west of us. The severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center has a threat of severe weather over Iowa, but by Friday, a marginal risk exists over southwestern Wisconsin for the possibility for some storms in the evening that could bring gusty winds and perhaps some hail. Uh, precipitation over the last five days, generally about one to two inches over much of eastern Iowa and parts of far southwestern Wisconsin. Much of our viewing area, though, had less than a half of an inch of rain, and uh, we're probably going to add to that in the order of about one to two inches right through the weekend. Live view from the Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam and the WISC Sky Cam showing mostly cloudy skies, just a pretty gray overcast, and a shower every once in a while. High today because of the cloud cover, six 68 degrees, that's about 10 degrees below normal. 62, the overnight low temperature, actually a little bit above normal. We're at 65 now in Madison. Winds out of the east-southeast at 7 miles per hour. Humidity is at 75%. Notice temperatures are warmer to the north. 74 Marshfield, 73 Eau Claire, and 78 in La Crosse where they have sunshine. The rest of us underneath the clouds in the 60s. But this uh, weather system to our south will head off to the east. There'll be a little bit of a break, and then we'll see the next weather system starting to gain strength in southwestern Canada. That will drop southeastward and bring us a chance for some showers and thunderstorms as we head toward the weekend. This weather system has a lot of rain associated with it, even some severe weather at times uh, down toward the Ohio Valley. But to the west, notice there's not a lot of really warm air, so temperatures will get back in the 70s uh, once we get a little more sunshine. But still, uh, we're not seeing any widespread really warm weather. Dew point temperature is still low 60s here, but they do dry out to our north. That's why they had the clearing up to the north and the sunshine. Tomorrow we'll see some breaks in the clouds, just an outside chance of a shower in the afternoon. Forecast for tonight calls for a low temperature of around uh, 55 degrees. Uh, most of the showers will be over with after this evening. For tomorrow, look for variably cloudy skies, just a slight chance for a shower in the afternoon. High temperature at 74. Future track shows those showers moving on out tonight. Look for low temperatures, mid 50s for tomorrow. Highs in the mid 70s for tomorrow with some breaks in the clouds. Then for tomorrow, night look for low temperatures in the upper uh, mid to upper 50s and then high temperatures back in the mid 70s for Friday although there will be a chance for a shower or thunderstorm late in the day 7 to 10 day forecast does call for temperatures to be back to around 80 for the weekend with shower and thunderstorm chances then low to mid 80s with lesser rain chances for much of next week at the American Family Insurance Championship a former Ryder Cup captain says Steve Stricker's the guy that makes the tournament what it is the story is coming up in sports
We thought the Bucks news conference today would be about their preparations for the NBA draft tomorrow night, but the Bucks have the last pick in the first round and that's it. But then the news came out today that Chris Middleton is opting out of his contract. He's going to become a free agent. Middleton turns down a $13 million option and is looking for a long-term deal. His max deal would be five years, $190 million if he stays with the Bucks, or a four-year, a $141 million deal with someone else. Sounds like the Bucks would like to keep him, but at the right price. At the end of the day, I think players want to win. And I think they want to be paid fairly. And that's our job. That's my job is to figure out what fair is, to figure that out with their agents, to figure it out with the rest of the league. I think Chris wants to, wants to be paid fairly. And I think Chris wants to win at the highest level. And I think he fully believes that he can do that here in Milwaukee. At the appropriate time, we'll dive into those negotiations just like we will with everyone else. And, and we'll try to put our team together. Tea times are out for the first round of the American Family Insurance Championship and tournament host Steve Stricker will be in the first group out on Friday morning off the first tee at 9 o'clock. He'll play with two former AmFam champions, Scott McCarron and Kirk Triplett. Jerry Kelly will be two groups behind them. Kelly's off the first tee at 920 with VJ Singh and Kenny Perry. The players are at University Ridge today and tomorrow are Pro-Am days and of course a lot of work on the practice range as well. This is about as good a field as you'll get on PGA Tour champions. The great reputation of the tournament is all over the tour and the fact Steve Stricker is the face of the tournament really helps. You know the golf course is, is wonderful, the practice facilities are second to none and from what I've seen having just got here only arrived from Ireland yesterday so I'm a little bit jet lagged but through my weary eyes everything that I've seen today is exactly how you would imagine Steve Stricker would do something to the, the best he possibly can. Baseball Hall of Famer John Smoltz makes his first appearance at the AmFam Championship. This is the third and final sponsor exemption Smoltz is using this year. You'll see him on MLB Network and Fox Baseball, so his plate's really full. He's a very good golfer, but admits he's not on a level with the top players on PGA Tour champions. Smoltz pitched in the majors for 21 years, and when he was young, he never expected he'd play golf at all. I didn't like it. I, I thought it was stupid at the age of 20. I'd never played it. I mean, I didn't just... I grew up in Michigan and just never played it. And now I have such admiration for the sport itself, for the character in which you, 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 you know, carry yourself, and obviously the honor in, in the game. I have the greatest appreciation now. I just got off the phone with a buddy of mine, and he was like, all right, top 10 this weekend. I said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Do you know where I'm at? Baseball this afternoon, the Brewers are swept in San Diego. Fran Mill Reyes hits a three-run homer off Jeremy Jeffers to win it. 8-7 Padres the final. Brewers back home to open a 10-game homestand tomorrow night against the Reds. It's good to practice, but you have to be careful. Washington Nationals pitcher Max Scherzer was practicing bunting last night. Oh, my goodness. That's got to hurt. In fact, it did hurt. Scherzer broke his nose falling off the bunt. The next time he'll pitch? Tonight. He's starting against the Phillies. Oh, uh, that just makes your like there's eyes only, water there's watching only one it. One other place that would hurt more to get hit. <laughs> we won't get your arm? That. Yeah. You'll tell me after. You'll tell me on the road. On the road. road. Yeah. Time yeah. for the DH. Hey, this, uh, this, the celebrities and the names of this golf tournament. It's it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be awesome. It, it, it's developed such a reputation on PGA Tour champions that yeah, all the big names are gonna be there. So. Jack Nicklaus in town too, right? Yeah, That's Saturday. Saturday you yeah. bet. All right. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can keep the rain away. Although there still are chances for showers and thunderstorms in the forecast, beginning Friday night and then continuing Saturday and Sunday. Not a complete washout, but there will be some rain around. Temperatures in the upper 70s to around 80 for the weekend, and then as we head into the latter parts of next week, temperatures go up and the rain chances go down. Gary, thank you, and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. We'll be back here at 10. Hope you can join us.